do is I'll just get started now. Um, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Um, I'm Scott. I'm the Marketing Communications Officer at the SRA. Uh, this is Hannah May joining me today. Hello. So, yeah, I'm Hannah McGraham and I am the Chair of the SRA. And today we're going to be talking about how we got started in student radio and um, why we love it so much and um, why we think it's something that everyone else should be getting involved in. And if you're not getting involved in student radio, different ways that you are able to as well. And um, there's lots of fantastic ways right across um, the UK and student radio stations. Um, you can ask questions if you've got any. There's a Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. So if you type it in there, everyone can see your question. You can write in anonymously, I can't say that word, anonymously, anonymously. or um, with your name on it. And um, we'll hopefully be able to answer your question. Um, but without further ado, let's just jump into it. Um, Hannah May, um, how, how did you get started in student radio? So I got started in student radio in my second year at university. So for the first year, I actually didn't join any societies or sports clubs. I was, I thought it was so uncool to do that. And I was definitely so wrong. Like if it's just societies and sports clubs are just a great way to like make new friends, learn new skills. Um, so yeah, I got involved in my second year. My boyfriend was like, get involved, get involved with Shock Radio, which was the student station at the University of Salford. Um, so I went along, went to like the introduction session, did some like taster ones, like learning the equipment a little bit. And I was like, right, I'm going to apply for a show. So I applied for a show and it was, um, I, think, I can't remember what it was called, it was something like Dance Through the Decades. And like each week I'd pick a different year and play those songs from that year. I did that for about like the first semester. Then I was like, I don't want to like, do that anymore I wanted to do something that was more me um, so I changed it to the girl power hour where I only played um, tracks from female artists and bands and I did that for like the rest of my time at university and it really was me where I could just play whatever artist I want from the Spice Girls to Girls Aloud to Little Mix to Lady Gaga to Beyonce like I literally played everything and anything um, so that's kind of how I got started what about you Scott? I well, I studied broadcast production. We both did quite similar degrees. And about the second weekend, this guy on my course came in and one day and was like, oh, I just went along to the social for Queen's Radio. It was really, really good. You guys should get involved. So I, I went along to like the training day, the studio training. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure what I think of this. Like I knew that I enjoyed radio, but I was like, not sure if it's exactly what I want to do. Because I was thinking I want to do TV like after my degree. And we had to do like a sample on air, just like introduce yourself, what you studied and when you, where you came from. And I did that. And the, the guy that was like kind of teaching in the studio was like, you're really natural. And I was like, am I? Like, I didn't think so, but I signed up for a show and it was myself and my friend Finn from my course. And it was called Talk the Week. And we would just choose news stories and like lighthearted stories that kind of interested us. And for an hour, every Sunday, we just chat about, the news and it was just a really fun thing that's what I th think kept me in student radio just on how fun it was and you get to do whatever you want and then I got involved with the committee and um, I think that like really sealed it for me on like just how great it was just being able to get involved and coming up with different ideas for the station getting more of that off-air side of things and I think that's the thing that for both of us we've kind of found that like it's not just on air that you have to enjoy yeah so what role did you go for for the committee for your first like what roles were you on in the committee for queens so in my first year i was the deputy online content and promotion um and that was really good fun getting to do like all social media and advertising for events and then in my second year i became station manager um which is a challenge and for any station, every station manager that I've spoken to right across um, has always said it's a challenge, um, but it's so rewarding as well. Um, I can see that there's a couple of station managers also in this call as well, so I'm sure that you'll all agree with that, that it's one of the most rewarding things to do. Um, what about you? What roles did you get involved with? Yeah, so I first got into street radio in like the September of the second year and like by October they were like we need someone to do our graphic design because I, I was at SU um didn't have the time to do that so I sat down with um like the graphic design guy at our student union and he like taught me all the ways 
Um, and then in the January, we had like a EGM, I think it is, where you have like an emergency election to like re-elect new people. So I was like, right, I'm going to go for this role. It was an empty role. It hadn't even existed. They created it for me. So I went, right, I'm just going to go for it. And then I got elected on that. So I was like head of graphic design for six months. And then I was like, I want to up this and I want to put my graphic design on their social media and actually take control of their platforms and really push the brand further. So I went for their social media manager and I was that until I graduated last year. And from that, we both got involved with the SRA. It's what we're doing now. How did you get into the SRA? Um, because Shock's always been a member um, through your time. So how did you get involved with the SRA committee? Yeah, good question. Um, I actually didn't join in the July when obviously we elect and pick new officers. I joined in October. There was the position for content officer came up. And I wasn't going to go for it. I was like, I've got too much on like doing shock and my university degree. And I was like, obviously I had like a part-time job on the side. And I was like, I can't do it. Like I haven't got the time. But Meg Haywood, who was the regional officer of Northwest and North Wales at the time, she was like, you are the perfect person for the role. Like just go for it. Send in like your application, see what happens. If you don't get it, it's not the end of the world. If you get it, give it a go um, and see how you can manage your time and go from there. So I've put in for it and then obviously the wonderful SRA team back in 2018 picked me then um so that's how I started off and then I ended up moving up to marketing and comms last spring um when we were at the Swansea conference and I did a whole speech for that and I was so nervous I was even running uncontested and I was still so nervous and then obviously this year um I've gone for chair and I've been elected in as well so yeah my journey is very different to what yours is so I'll let you chat about how you got into the SRA and yeah, where you are now yeah for anyone that's in here that doesn't know northern ireland wasn't um a region in the sra until the uh swansea uh conference in 2019 Um, so my first year at queen's radio we were kind of just doing our own thing and then in our second year um or my second year as we were were in the summer um the sra reached out and we're like hey we know that you're not part of the SRA, but uh, do you want to be part of our music network? So we kind of got in doing some music things and we're really lucky to have Radio One uh, come across. And that was just such a cool experience having um, Radio One presenters and DJs in the studio, like doing shows with us for a day. Um, and from there, we started looking at joining the SRA. So we officially joined in the January 2019, but for the full time didn't have a a regional officer so when I was at conference in Swansea I was kind of like this is the sort of thing that I would want to do and I'd put forward the motion for a, a Northern Ireland regional officer and had actually put it forward thinking I'm not going to run for it I want someone else to do it like I just I just want there to be a regional officer and then I enjoyed conference so much the community behind um like between the stations and all that and I was like this is what I want to be part of um so ended up running and got it um and then this year i decided to run for marketing com so coming in after you um <laughs> which has been um great handover but um it's been a really interesting journey and in kind of moving my way through and getting more involved with student radio um but i've mentioned radio one there which is one of my highlights what's your student radio highlights been because there's so much Ooh, yeah I think actually so much happens in student radio like it's hard to pinpoint what the best moments are but I think I've got two so I'm going to be selfish and tell them about two but obviously the one was when Radio One did a tour and we actually did a show with Greg James so Tom Hinckley presented it Alex Hughes produced it and then I was like the social media behind it and making it all look jazzy and fancy online and like making sure Greg James seen our tweets and like shared them and stuff which he did so I was very happy um, so yeah just having him in the studio and being able to like work with like an industry professional and a student radio legend was amazing and then I think my second moment well highlight is um, we did a live music event called Sound of Salford where we raised money for Mind Charity and it was all um local artists and bands from Salford Uni or Salford as a whole and um, we put on the whole music night we all beat it from our SU bar and it was just really nice because we raised like over 500 pounds for it as well and like being part of such a big event that we had put on ourselves to raise money for such an incredible charity was just honestly so warming so yeah what about yours obviously you said Radio 1 have you got any other highlights um 
first of all, I love the sound of sulfur. And I think that's such a brilliant idea. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I, I, that's the stuff of student radio. I absolutely love the gigs that we put on at Queen's Radio. Um, it was just so nice to see like new talent, especially my first year. Like I remember we had an artist called Ro who was like becoming quite popular, but like would still do like our small gigs and all that. Um, and now she's like, when Snow Patrol opened, like she opened for Snow Patrol and it was just things like that. And it's like, you get to see small artists before they go on and do amazing things and things like that. So I loved the music side, but um, for me, the main highlight was actually the move. As, as I came in as station manager, our student union was gonna get demolished and they moved us to like a temporary building, which they're still in. And we had to like move across that summer, but I was back, well, where I am now in Glasgow, back home with my parents. And um, yeah, it was really, really challenging moving. And then I came back to Belfast, like I think it was two weeks before Radio One came and we still didn't have a full studio and things like that. So it was like that two weeks just really like brought the community of everyone in the committee together. And it was like, we, we had something to work towards as well. Like we, we have to have a studio working by like the time that Radio One get here. Um, and that was so stressful. And at the time I was like, no, I, I don't want to do this. This is just too much. Like, but <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> it's one of those things, like looking back, I'm like, no, that was definitely my highlight because it brought everyone together. We all knew what we were doing and it was just so much fun. Like I remember we did like a massive Ikea trip one day and it was just fun stuff like that, which you don't always get to do like once you go out into the industry. So that's the thing, like having fun with it. So obviously we've talked about like student radio being a community. What would you say is, like why do you love being part of like the student radio association and sh your student station when you were at university like, why do you love it <laughs> um i think it's like what you said right at the start about joining shock it's just like meeting other people and getting that side of the thing that's been fantastic and i absolutely love everyone that i've met through student radio whether that's in northern ireland at queen's radio and the other stations there or, or across the uk from student radio conference and it's just seeing so many people that are kind of at the same stage of their careers as you as well not everyone wants to go into the radio industry um a lot of people do and it's just really nice seeing that like you can have conversations about oh i have this opportunity and that and like people that get it because it's one of those industries not everyone like gets what it's like working in um so it's nice having that sort of like-minded people around you but also everyone's just great crack and like they I've never had a bad moment with someone from student radio just it's always so much fun but what about you what what is it that you love about it I think it's like, like when you are in student radio at university you can learn so many skills from like hard skills like learning the tech how to like produce a show um using like whatever radio software you use so we use myriad then we changed to zeta so for me that was a big change I am not a techie person so I was like no I can't learn this but I took the time to learn it so it's learning the skills like that but then also the like interpersonal skills so you've got like making friends like I know it's a stupid skill to learn but it's good to be able to communicate with people and like work alongside similar people who want to do what you want to do I think that's a really good one and like problem solving because in street radio there's always a problem whether it's the studio breaking or just yeah there's always an issue so it's always good to have them like skills that you can like transfer into any industry or any field or any career um so I think that was kind of like one of the best bits and obviously just making friends like you said Scott like if I hadn't gone the into the SRA like I wouldn't be friends with so many amazing people like yourself now um I don't really know what I would do in my spare time really um but yeah it's really nice to make them friends and like even though we're other sides of the country half the time it's still nice that you can just pick up the phone and give someone a ring and be like I'm having a bad day or you know it's just friends for life isn't it that's, that's so cringe <laughs> oh my god uh, but as, as cringy as it sounds I have to completely agree and it's the thing that definitely through the last like four months or so with like coronavirus and everything like everyone in the SRA was kind of in that whole thing of like we don't have conference we don't have that big meetup so like we all put in like we were video there was one point that I think that we we're always on a video chat like every evening with people yeah. like it was just so nice to have people that like you could just chat to about utter nonsense as well um 
but we've, we've kind of talked about like what we've loved and what we've enjoyed, but why, why should other people get started? I, I guess lots of people are here to find out like what's great to get involved with. Um, why, why should people get started in student radio, Hannah? <laughs> Yeah, um, so first of all, if you have got any questions about why you should get involved, whether that's student radio or any student media, let us know and we'll answer them. But yeah, for me, just getting out there and like putting yourself out there with like different people and like learning those new skills is like a vital point why you should do it because you aren't going to learn those skills sitting at home watching Netflix. Um, so I think it's that one thing is really good and like joining a station like again putting yourself out there turning up to the introdu introduction meeting even if you don't know anyone there'll be a lot of people in that similar situation um and just putting yourself out there again and just taking everything like any opportunity you get with street media just take it and run with it and see where it goes see where you want to if you want to take it as a career or if it's just for fun um and yeah and if any opportunities come from like whether it's like entering the awards or like going to conference or entering demo factor and like helping other people with stuff just go for it i think that's the main piece of advice is why do you want to join just do it because you're going to have fun so that's mine <laughs> yeah i i think it's one of those things lots of people would if you're wanting to go into radio or broadcasting of any sort it's a great thing to get involved with but i've met so many people um at my station that just didn't really have any interest in going into broadcasting but could still absolutely love it just because of what you said like the transferable skills from it like the amount of lawyers that I knew that did shows um yeah. and then we have lots of like history students and things like that and it's just because it's a way that they can chat about what they're interested in chatting in but also like gain confidence and things like that and I think for me that was one thing I got like the idea of doing a show utterly terrified me and then there was one point I had I think about four different shows and oh, wow. it was just because I was just like I, I want to do this more because of the confidence and things and I think that's the thing about joining your student station like you don't just have to do it if you want to go into the industry you can do it yeah. just for whatever reason if it's to meet more people or um all sorts I think it's good for like helping your confidence because when I went to uni, I was quite a shy person. I wouldn't really put myself out there into any situation. But student radio has really helped me build that confidence to be in a situation and like own it in a sense, because I would always be a bit like the quiet one who'd stay quite reserved. Um, and I've seen confidence grow in other people who, when I was in third year last year, there was some first years who were maybe shy or like quiet. So it's like helping them and encouraging others to find that confidence within them. So that's kind of a really nice thing as well. And then there's obviously like there was a question yesterday in the Ariel Free panel about what do you do if you don't have a station that you can join and things like that. Um, and well, I guess I, I'm going to plug like join the SRA and yeah. like the SRA can help. Um, but go for it. That was um, one thing that I was kind of pushing like really if there's no station at your uh, university or college. Um, you create one like all you need is a laptop really um, like we've got no fancy mic setups today to chat to each other um, yeah. and it's yeah it's a brilliant thing to get involved with and if anyone in here has any questions about how to set up or um, why they should get involved or who they should be speaking to um, definitely get in touch with the SRA across social media or um, on our website you can find everyone's contact details and I know Hannah May is more than happy to chat to anyone. Definitely, I think as well. Like, if you're a, if you work at an SU and you're listening to this, um, if any student media people come to you and set up a station, if you can give them that opportunity to do that, give them that chance because it'll really help them, whether it's with their career or with their like soft skills. Um, and it's plus also just a great platform. Um, for if you need to promote anything as well like your events like we covered varsity and we had that coverage playing in the bar of our su um so it's yeah if you can support your student media station setting up it's a great start and a great place to be as well i always think and talking about setting up we've uh, had a question from kate um saying best affordable recording microphone which 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we're both having the same reaction. Um, I would always say your phone is a fantastic option. Um, the amount of interviews that I still record just on my phone, um, I'd say that's always the go-to option. Um, and I'm trying to think the one that I've got up, upstairs. I got a, like a £20 one off Amazon, just something that, just a microphone, because the thing that I've really learned from student radio is it doesn't matter how good the kit is, it's really what you do with it and the stories that you tell or the radio uh, program that you make from it. Um, and I think most people in the industry would also echo that. Um, anything else on that, Hanami? No, I am honestly like the worst person when it comes to radio tech. Um, I don't have a setup at home or anything. So I literally do. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't really help you with that one. I think it's all because I work in video now. It's kind of, I don't know how they're doing like all home, bro home broadcasting within industry or how all the student stations have done it. But I know other people know the information. So Kay, if you want, drop us a message and we can put you in contact with the right people to help you out with that answer. And on that, we also had a session the other day um, about tech and radio. So we'll be releasing clips of that over the next couple of weeks across the SRA platform. So um, get you can get in touch with like Roger Hall and Steve Clark um, and Matthew as well, who was um, on that set oh, on that lineup um and all three of them would be more than happy to chat about the tech stuff um but i think that's the thing that i originally worried about um in student radio like oh i don't have any kit or any of that stuff and it really isn't a big deal is it no like even if you don't know how to use it um there's always someone who can help you is what i've learned um, and don't be afraid to ask for help like if you are struggling to use a piece of equipment whether you borrowed it from uni or you've just bought it and you need a bit of guidance um there's always people to who can help you so it's always good to like, put it on twitter being like anyone know how to use this and someone on, on radio twitter will be able to help you whether that's an industry person or someone else in student radio i feel like we're all here to help each other we're all big one big family i always think um emma's asking what is your favorite thing about doing student radio um Hannah, what is, apart from the stuff that you've kind of talked about with the the Salford, the sound of Salford, I knew I was going to get that wrong, and Greg Dane, <laughs> like, what, what was the other favourites? Um, I think from an SRA perspective, it's being able to work the big events that we do, so our flagship events, so awards and conference, um, and meeting all the amazing students and members that we have um, who attend these events, and like, for awards especially like preparing all awards from like July with entries and nominations in October to the ceremony where we're like live tweeting out especially in the role I did and then seeing all these students win these amazing prizes and awards it's really warm and to see that the radio industry is safe and it's in really good hands of the future talent so that for me is a really big thing so I think if you want to get into student radio especially like the SRA or whatever um, it's rewarding in a sense of you feel a sense of like you've done your duty when you see these students succeeding and winning awards and going off to do amazing things whether that's radio one or global or bauer like yeah it's just so rewarding yeah i completely agree we've got um i've had like a mini flood of questions um, wow there you um, a quick fire round so we're gonna <laughs> quick fire in the final couple of minutes um hebe um the incoming station manager at Queen's Radio, um, I said, um, how did you both juggle student radio with degrees and any tips? You can go in first if you like, Hannah. Yeah, I'll go really fast. So I did TV and radio as my degree, but student radio had nothing to do with that. So it was kind of making sure I wasn't spending too much time in studio radio, which I definitely did. I had so many sleepless nights trying to get a graphic to work or a tweet to work or planning my show or leading up to these big events um but it's just knowing when to switch off from student radio and then focusing on your degree you know when you've got deadlines coming up everyone understands in student radio that you have to put your career and your degree first over student radio so i think everyone understands that you have to balance that lifestyle and everyone's dead supportive of it so that's from my point of view yeah i would say exactly the same time management's key like knowing when you're gonna go this is as much as i can devote um which is really tough because like if I know both of us are really uh, into like doing 
absolutely everything, everything. you can for yeah. something. And then um, we don't know how to say no, that's our problem. <laughs> And that is the huge problem with it. So like know when you've taken on enough um, and feel free to say to people like, I'm going to have to take a couple of days break so that I can work on my degree or so that I can work on this interview sort of thing. Um, and then the last question that we will have time for is how easy did you find collaborating your uni's radio with your uni's tv or other media sections um i didn't have any other media output at uh, queen's radio we had uh, the the gown which was the newspaper and we did a couple of like cross blog posts on our websites um but that's all we were really able to do but i know that there's a bit more of a output at Salford so Hannah may might have yeah. more to say there. So at Salford um, we have Keys TV um, who are actually going to be hosting the NASA conference um, this like in spring just gone um, so I never really got involved with Key T Keys TV um, I was more the radio side um, but I've always loved like the camera side but I think we did shared coverage on like our presidential election um, so we did like a big live studio election debate and we covered it from like the radio studio as well. And we were there in like the, oh my God, TV studio. And we all like collaborated together in that. So that was really good in that sense. And um, hopefully they've done more collaborations um, since we've left. And I think the Student Ops Fest has given us a really good opportunity for the SRA and NASA and um, SBA to rekindle the relationship and start working on like multi-projects um, because they all do interlink in a sense. like. Um, yeah, they all do interlink and it would make sense for us all to work together on like another big project like this and come together and unite, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. It's been fantastic this week and we're still not over yet. Um, not at all. But it's been great to work with all the other organisations. Yeah, so tonight at 5.30, we've got a talk um, about how SUs and street media can work together. So off the back of if you want to set up a new station, this is a great one if you want to set up a station or if you're from an SU how can you work with student media that's a great one for that and then tomorrow at 3 p.m we've got how to build a community in your radio station or tv station or whatever you've got and then at 5 p.m there's a panel um, and it's there's more to radio than just presenting because people forget that um there is so many different avenues and like careers in radio that is more than just presenting um so how you can chat to the amazing panel there and ask questions and hear all about how they got into their career and where they are now. Absolutely. Well, I'm really looking forward to all those sessions. Me too. Um, especially community, um, because that's something that we've both talked so much about. Yeah. Um, but I think that's all we've got time for yeah. today. It's like, yeah, thank you for everyone coming along, listen to us have a good chit chat on a Saturday afternoon. And I hope you have a lovely rest of the weekend. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye.